Now let's welcome in Brian Clavin. And Brian, before we get started, uh, obviously the memo today was a gray V-neck sweater. Like, the, like you got to text me at least that you're going to wear it so I don't. That's funny. Hey, that being said, I put on Sunday's best just for you, man. The, the typical <laughs> Twilman twil thing, I had no idea. The collared shirt, the V-neck sweater. Hey, the only thing I'm missing is the, the digital, the hairline from your digital design. And I don't think that's ever coming back, but it's almost- <laughs> No, I don't think, you can't borrow my Lego haircut anytime. <laughs> um, Brian, I appreciate you joining the show. Obviously you and I have uh, connected throughout the years. I've been a huge fan of yours as you've been a uh, huge part of this development part of the player in the United States. We're going to get into that in a moment. Um, but you were part of an academy, part of the youth uh, soccer culture for over 20 years in this country. We just had USL Commissioner Jake Edwards on. I guess my question for you is this. In order for the, any academy to be successful, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, I think it's pretty, pretty clear, right? It's producing and developing professional soccer players. That's, uh, that's the, the reason all these, these clubs are investing here domestically and abroad. Um, here, we just started that movement, what, like a decade ago, like you, like you said, within the MLS. And I think we've come a long way. I think uh, we're going in the right direction. When it comes to the league and the gaming circuit, um, it's one component. I think it's important to have high-level competition uh, on the weekends, right? And we've always stressed that. And we're not discovering anything by saying that. But in my opinion, the most important part is the internal competition. What that means is, uh, what are we doing in our everyday environment in our clubs? Okay, because if you take it from a mathematical perspective, I think the contact hours, 10 hours uh, of training, and plus more, many clubs have these players in-house now, housed there, school there. So the contact hours are so much more and so much more important than just a test on the weekend. So. From my experience, guys, I mean, I, I don't know how to put it, but bluntly, you know, the intensity is just lacking in most training environments here in the United States, okay? And you can clearly see that, not even by going to the train. You can see it from the field product on the weekend, the player's body language, the body language of the staff on the sideline. I think that's the component lacking to truly develop on a consistent basis, high-level professional soccer players. And there's been a few exceptions that have done a good job, right? I, uh, I think just with the academy over the last decade, Lucci and the, the Dallas uh, organization have done a great job. Um, his environment is very intense. I think Martin and Real Salt Lake have done an exceptional job. Listen, philosophically, in terms of methodology and seeing the game, we may see it different, but the intensity factor is always there in those teams, and it's there in the everyday sessions and the environment, and it's translated to a lot of professional soccer players. Um, and lastly, the ones that, that we've worked with, my staff and I at Chivas and Galaxy, I think, um, you know, I always say time is a good measurement and only time will tell. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how, how some of these players plan out. But that's the thing missing, in my opinion, Taylor, is the everyday environment, the internal competition is just not there. Well, and I'm glad you brought it up because I do think your time, especially at the Galaxy, has shown some of those fruits. You know, a lot of the current under-20 uh, World Cup national team players, you've had a huge impact on. Your staff has had a huge impact on. You've seen a lot of of the other groups. And what's interesting, Brian, is during this pandemic, you started on your YouTube channel, 343, like this firsthand knowledge behind the scenes with the under 20s. My first question is, why? <laughs> so, I mean, to, to make it short, I, I have a soccer background, Argentine soccer background. My parents got me into the game at a very young age. And we were fortunate enough that back then those games via Fox, I think Fox Soccer Channel or Fox yep. Deportes, yep. would show the Argentine League. So, and there's another Argentine channel that you get in cable subscription. So we would get to see all the games and then I would get to dissect. There's so many shows and content, the post game, right? Taylor, the, the analysis, the critique, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. And it's something like, like a passion project I've always wanted to be involved in and try myself. So, you know, now I'm on, it's been like a year long uh, absence from the sideline doing what I truly love and coaching. So I thought, what better time now, you know, and, and we started off with, with dissecting the U20 player pool. And, and I think it's something that I'm going to continue doing uh, until I'm back on the sideline. Yeah, Brian, I think what's very interesting is over the last 10 years, what I've noticed here at ESPN is that the average fan, if you go 10 years further, so 20 years ago, they're way more educated now. And so your YouTube channel, in that perspective, there, there's an appetite for that in this country that I'm not so sure existed 20 years ago. 
And that's why I, it came across mine and I saw it and I was like, this is stuff that we need more of. I want to dive into one of your episodes. It's a huge topic. It's Giovanni Reina, Yanez. Should they skip the under 20 World Cup? From my point of view, unless you're a regular on the senior national team, I played against Xavi for Spain, Iker Casillas. Yeah. They didn't skip the under-20 World Cup. <laughs> I think we're putting the, the cart before the horse if we're having this conversation. No, 100%. And, and I cited a ton of examples, you know, from mm -hmm. recent world-class successes and World Cup champions like Paul Fogba. You know, he was a consolidated starter on Juventus. And he went and he did his thing at the World Cup and it propelled his career. And yep. I think the experience gain is just so important, Taylor. So we're talking about our two best players. As of yep. today, Gio and Uli are two best players. So why would we rob our two best players of this experience for themselves, for the mm -hmm. rest of the team? Because t face it, Taylor, in any sport, if you take out the two best players, the team suffers. So mm -hmm. I would only excuse this if, you know, the Qatar World Cup was before their next U-20 World Cup, which it's not, yep. right? The U-20 yep. World Cup is slated for fall of 2021, and, and Qatar is for winter of 2022. So I think, without a doubt, those two guys need to be on the field for our U-20s. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.